He is one of the most talked about CEOs in the world right now. The man behind companies such as SpaceX and Tesla. Mr. Musk, it's a great pleasure to have you in Copenhagen. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be back. What uh, brings you to Denmark? Um, well, um, I'm here to see the, the, the Tesla uh, Danish team. Um, I'm actually uh, visiting a number of countries um, on this visit. So I just came from uh, Luxembourg um, and, and I'm headed to Germany and uh, Netherlands and uh, Belgium. Uh, so here, here to see the team, see, see how things are going, um, talk to some of the people in government and so forth. What message do you bring to, to Denmark? Well, I think the, the most important message is that, um, uh, is that uh, Denmark is a, is a great leader in renewable energy with wind. Um, and I think that there's an opportunity to be a leader in um, sustainable transport as well. Um, but um, although uh, Denmark is doing incredibly well on, on, on wind, um, the, if you look at say, how many cars going down the road are electric, there's very few, le well under 1%. Mm. So I think it's, it's very important uh, that uh, government policy continue to support electric vehicles. Um, and, um, and you know, as, as more wind energy is generated, uh, it, it, you know, it makes sense to put that into sustainable transport. I think it's, there are sort of two very important halves of the same problem. So I think it's... Um, is uh, Denmark an interesting uh, market for, for Tesla, a small country like Denmark? Yeah, I think the, 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 for, uh, for, de for Denmark, um, it, 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 I think Denmark can serve as an example to the rest of the world to say what can be done with the sustainable transport. Um, so with, with larger countries, it's difficult to make a big impact. Um, but with smaller countries, you can say, hey, this, this is what it can be like to, to other countries to say, you know, with the right policies, you can have a significant number of, of electric vehicles on the road. So I think um, Denmark can be an important leader in the world as an example in this regard. You mentioned when Denmark has the world's largest windmill maker, Vestas, and a large production of sustainable energy. Right. Uh, but we do have trouble storing the wind energy. Yes. Can you help us uh, with that? Uh, absolutely. So the electric vehicles themselves can be obviously a great recipient to buffer uh, wind energy. So depending upon uh, wh what level of wind energy is, is being uh, generated, you can actually have the pricing of electricity vary so that people can charge their electric cars depending upon uh, if there's a large amount or a small amount of energy being generated from the wind. Um, then in addition, uh, Tesla has a, a battery pack, a stationary battery pack that is uh, under development and will go into significant production later this year. Um, and so combining wind energy with a stationary storage is, is very powerful because that provides a complete solution. Um, Would you consider setting up a facility in Denmark even? Uh, yeah, we are, that, that, is, that is certainly something uh, uh, under consideration, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tesla is improving battery technology really fast. How do you expect your battery technology will change the auto sector as well as the energy sector in the coming years? Well, I think for, for the battery technology, both for, for electric vehicles and for stationary storage, is a critical piece of the equation for a long-term future with, of sustainable energy. So you need to have sustainable energy generation, which I think is going to be primarily uh, uh, wind and solar. Um, and then you combine that with uh, stationary storage, uh, which is needed because of the intermittent nature of renewable energy generation. Uh, and, then you, and, and then the third piece of the equation is electric transport. Um, so if you have all three of those pieces, sustainable generation, storage, and uh, electric vehicles, then you have a complete solution for the future, and then we have a good future. But how do you feel about taking on such large industries as the auto in industry and the energy industry? Um, well, it's definitely it can be quite difficult at times. Um, the you know the, um, the big car companies and the big energy companies have quite sharp elbows, uh, so they try to you know various times they try to squash small companies like Tesla. Uh, but um, I think we you know we have the support generally of, of we have the popular support um, and. Um, and we have a very dedicated team at Tesla, so I mean, it's hard, but uh, I, I think you know, we, we, we're making good progress. Tesla is really getting sales going, really getting cars out there. You've been able to get a head start uh, on other electric car makers, uh, but they are really coming along now. What Which I think is great, yeah. Yeah, what, what is your response to, to the new competing electric uh, sports cars, such as uh, Porsche's new electric car? Yeah, well, you know, the reason that we're doing uh, Tesla is to try to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport, to, to have there be more electric cars on the road. 
Um, and, and to that end, we actually open sourced all of our patents. So we said, you know, any car company can use our technology. It's no problem. They don't even have to pay a fee to us. Um, so, so for us, you know, we're very philosophically motivated. You know, we care about at the advancement of electric vehicles because we think, you know, unless there's sustainable transport, it's going to be the future is going to be terrible. So. So I'm glad to see these announcements of, of these other companies. Um, I, I hope they, they move even faster than they announce. But don't you expect your, maybe your investors to uh, expect you to fight off these competition rather than embracing it? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I did say that when we were in public even, I said, look, you know, Tesla has a strong ideological motivation, so they shouldn't invest if they disagree with that. So they know from the beginning. Um, I've always been very clear about that. Um, but as long as we make compelling products, I think Tesla will do okay. So it, 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 it's not, we, I mean, we shouldn't do okay just because the competition f fail. I mean, we, we should do okay because we make good cars. That's the only reason. I want to get into uh, your vision f visions for electric cars, uh, Mr. Musk. Um, when will we break the 1,000 kilometer range mark for an electric car? A thousand kilometers. Hmm. Well, it depends on what circumstances for a thousand kilometers. Um, as it is, the record right now for a Model S is 800 kilometers. That's the furthest that anyone has driven a Model S. Um, so we could be close. Yeah, we're pretty close. Uh, now, in order to do that, they did drive at a relatively slow speed. So you know, we're talking. I think they drove maybe at 40 or 50 kilometers an hour or something like that. Um, but. Um, I think my guess is probably we could break a thousand kilometers within a year or two. Okay. Yeah. So within 2016, maybe even. Yeah. Two, I'd say if you say 2017, I'd say 2017 for sure. How fast? Uh, sorry. How far can a Tesla car drive uh, on a single charge in 2020? Oh, in 2020. Hmm. I guess we could probably make a car go 1,200 kilometers. Okay. Is that kind of the pace? going forward of, yeah, uh, of improving think, battery technology? Yeah, if you think maybe, um, you know, five to 10% a year, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any current plans for a self-driving Tesla? We do. Uh, I mean, the-, the Tell the, me about that, yeah. Sure. So the, the, the Tesla that is currently in production uh, has the, the ability to do uh, uh, automatic steering uh, or autopilot on highways, um, and that's currently being beta tested and will go into wide release hopefully next month. Um, so we're probably only a month away from having uh, autonomous driving, at least for highways and for relatively simple roads. Um, I mean, my guess for when we will have full autonomy is about three years. Three years? Approximately three years. However, regulators will probably not allow full autonomy for maybe at least one to two years, maybe one to three years after that. So it depends on, this, on the, the particular market. Some markets will be, the regulators will be more forward leading than others. Um, but in terms of technic, when, when will it be technologically possible? I think uh, three years. What kind of cars are we driving 20 years from now? <sighs> Man, <laughs> I hope civilization is still around in 20 years. Um, if it is. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think in 20 years, I think we'll see, um, hopefully, a very large percentage of cars being electric. Um, probably all cars being built will have full autonomy in 20 years. Um, but, it, but it is important to bear in mind, like sometimes people think, think of cars like consumer products, like a phone or something like that. But in the case of a phone, the, the, the average ownership time for a phone is, is two or three years. But for a car, a car typically lasts 20 years before it is finally scrapped. So the, the, the total fleet of cars and trucks in the world is, is about two billion. Um, and that fleet is increasing, probably to two and a half billion. Um, and the new car production is, um, uh, is about 100, new cars and trucks, about 100 million per year. So in order to change the fleet, uh, if, if, if all cars become electric, say, immediately, then it would take more, probably more than 20 years to change the fleet. For autonomous driving, that may be less, because uh, if autonomous driving means that fewer cars and trucks are needed, 
then it, it's a, probably a smaller period of time, but it's probably still at least 10 to 15 years. Okay. So that's an important consideration when, th when thinking about how, how fast can things change in, in cars. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the, if, if you want to say how, how, how are we doing in terms of electric cars, in terms of sustainable transport, you know, I'd say just look at the cars going down the road, count how many electric cars out of 100, and that's, that tells you how, many, how much progress has been, ma been made. Um, and even in a place like Denmark, which is relatively forward-leaning, it's less than 1%. What can we do here in Denmark to, to uh, well, help you uh, reach the goal of a sustainable future? Sure. Well, I think it's, 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 it's for really for, for all, uh, electric, all companies making electric cars, Tesla being one of them, um, it's, it's really important, particularly in the early days of electric cars, to have the incentives remain in place. Um, they don't have to be there forever, but, but if, the, if the rug is pulled too quickly for electric cars, then you have an a, a industry which is just a baby. It's just a little tiny, tiny thing. Um, and it's, it's, I think, too early to sort of pull, pull incentives for, for an in industry that is in, an, in its infancy. In the future, no problem, but now would be difficult.